Hi, my name's Bronte Price. I'm applying for an ANZ Sydney Mardi Gras Community Grant 2020. And I just wanted to have an opportunity through this video to take the panel through the, uh, the content of the course that I'm applying for the grant to be taken online and also to provide a little bit of background. So by way of background, I uh, co-founded the Equality Network in 2016 and uh, the business partner who co-founded it with me indicated some time ago, several months ago, that she didn't want to keep going with the Equality Network. And so um, two or three months ago, I took over a responsibility for uh, managing and uh, carrying on the day-to-day -day work of the Equality Network. And so we've had this face-to-face -face course of uh, around LGBTIQ plus uh, inclusivity training face-to-face. Um, -face. It's been delivered now uh, numerous times in Western Australia, South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales. And the, 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 uh, the content of the course is quite mature. And it's just right now is the right time to take it online. Part of the, the trigger for that has been obviously COVID um, in enabling more people to access this inclusivity training. But it is also the right time for the business to be um, diversifying and, uh, and taking this content online. So to the content. It, uh, the content of the training course is, uh, for, is embedded in four modules. So the first three modules um, are done by everyone and then the fourth module is customised according to the industry sector uh, that, that you're in. Um, and so each module lasts roughly um, two hours and that could be you know, different uh, if taken online of course. Um, I expect that I'll still, when we get to live in COVID normal times, um, there'll be still opportunity to deliver this course face to face. There's an intermediary kind of mode as well between online and face to face. And that intermediary mode is kind of um, a blended um, mode using Zoom. But the one I'm talking about today is purely online. And so module one consists of an acknowledgement of country and uh, an acknowledgement of LGBTIQ plus elders as well. We talk about the international sign for um, the, the study space being a safe space. Uh, and we begin each of the modes, uh, modules rather, with acknowledgement of country, the acknowledgement of LGBTIQ plus elders, the safe space and a brief session on you can't ask that where people can just uh, ask any question they wish and we'll assure them that during that time uh, we'll get to answer them. Um, in module one we continue with um, what are the what are the stereotypes around members of the LGBTIQ plus community and what steps and measures can we take to get rid of those? What are some of the key terminology pieces? Uh, so sex, gender identity, gender expression, sexuality, sexual orientation, all of those kinds of key bits of terminology. Uh, and of course, um, other, other terms such as um, gender non-binary and gender diverse. Um, we move from there into unraveling the LGBTIQ plus acronym uh, what those letters actually stand for and what the plus stands for as well. Um, from there, the importance of symbols uh, and, um, and of flags in particular uh, and getting people to understand that each acronym of that, uh, each letter of that acronym has its own flag and certainly the importance of pronouns and we practice um, getting used to the use of pronouns. Um, we finish off module one by talking about uh, some offensive language, language that is best avoided in dealing with members of our, of our pink community. Module two, again, we start off with, as I said before, the acknowledgements and then the safe space and you can't ask that. We move pretty quickly in the, into the difference between uh, equality and equity. Um, there's a, a series of quizzes around how's your data and so uh, that really gets people to think, um, to nominate, uh, name 
a, a lesbian poet, name a bisexual author, name a, um, a gay swimmer, and so on and so on, um, through movies and culture and so on. It's, uh, it's quite, quite fun and, of course, it's quite hard to do and then we discuss what the reasons are for that. We have a look at exclusion on the basis of sexuality um, and inequality on that basis too around the world. We go through a, an exercise where we look at um, the rites of passage that you might experience as a child, um, as a teenager, as a, an adult, um, as you get more mature, and then uh, as an elder. And we look at those rites just general in, in general societal terms, and then we think about how they might be different if you were a member of the LGBTIQ plus community. And uh, that's it's quite uh, an astounding kind of um, recognition of the differences that might, might occur there. We go into a fair bit of depth around the international fight for equal rights, and we have uh, archival audio and video footage uh, of some of the activists from you know the 1950s through to through to current day uh, that we play and we discuss, and um, we finish off module two with a discussion of the timeline for the struggle uh, for equality in Australia and the 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 steps towards not only marriage equality but to, towards um, equality and we know that struggle continues and we talk about the reasons why that's still the case. Module three, we um, have a look at, uh, uh, we throw out a, a range of questions around, um, um, you know, when did you decide you were gay uh, and so on. There's about 50 of them. We don't do 50 but we we throw them out, and uh, all of these questions are questions that lots of us have been had had thrown at us. We um, go into an exercise where we talk about safety, and so we allocate people a um, an avatar, if you will, uh, and it could be from any of the letters of the acronym. And we talk about how safe is it for that person at university or on the train or walking down the street or at the gym, uh, at the movies and so on, and uh, why that might be the case or why it might not be the case. So it's getting a, an understanding that there are some places, uh, depending on context, where it's not always safe for members of our community. We look at uh, values, the, the values that we have uh, as we've grown up and the, the assumptions that those values sometimes take us on a journey uh, to have and so we we throw some uh, photos of couples um, up on the on the um, and individuals uh, up and get them to tell us their first what did you see first and um, it, it it goes to the very heart of the danger of making assumptions on the basis of people's appearance um, some more terminology to avoid uh, other than and this is different from the offensive language, this is just getting into some of the nuanced terminology. Um, we go into the, the notion of um, being in the closet or being out and the fact that not everyone is out and proud and, and the fact that there may well be people uh, in, their, in their family, for example, but also in their workplaces, in their social groups who are not to out and proud and, and the respect that one needs to um, use around that. We go into then a guided fantasy about uh, uh, imagining what it would feel like if the world you were in um, contained everyone who was from the LGBTI community, but you, you're straight. And it takes people through um, a range of situations that last probably 10 minutes. And at the end of that, we have a, a debrief. Uh, and we end up with uh, having a, a look at the mental health stats for each of the letters of the acronym, um, the communities within those. And um, and the, you know, the horrendous kind of stats that are there and what we could do as individuals or as workplaces to reduce those awful statistics. Uh, and of course, we compare it to the general population. The fourth, um, so everyone gets to do module one, module two, module three that I've just gone through. Um, the fourth one is where it's customised according to very much the audience. So, for example, if I was going to um, give 
uh, a, a module four to some marriage celebrants, for example. Uh, and my uh, key income is from uh, being a gay marriage celebrant. Uh, this would be the kind of uh, um, content that I'd put in. So the first one would be having a look at marriage equality around the world uh, and the fight for marriage equality. Um, part of my background is in data analytics and so I've crunched the numbers from the ABS uh, census in 2016 uh, that con collected data on same-sex, so to speak, same-sex couples. And um, I've also crunched those numbers. We know where those couples live. We know through crunching some other numbers um, how much they earn. And uh, so we put those into bands and we've done that for every state and territory in Australia. And uh, so we, we talk about the myth of the pink dollar um, and ha how that myth might have come about. We talk about the uh, sensitivities that LGBTIQ plus people might have when they approach you, for example, as a, as a, a vendor or a celebrant for a, a wedding. There are certainly from the Attorney General's Department in Canberra, there are obligations that celebrants have under the code of practice that to the Attorney General's Department has put out. And we talk about the um, understanding the LGBTIQ culture, just as they would understand Greek culture or Jewish culture. Um, and there, there are responsibilities to carry out as celebrants. We have a look at, uh, I've recently written a blog on 39 different rituals and traditions um, that are um, pertain to weddings and what the LGBTIQ plus um, alternatives might be for those. Things to remember um, when uh, you're having, <clears throat> sorry, a queer wedding uh, thing and just little tips to make the experience better for the couple as well as for the celebrant. Um, wedding terminology, things to avoid words and phrases to avoid on your website, um, the, the importance of having pictures if you're going to cater to same-sex um, couples, then pics to have and avoid on your, again on your documentation mistakes that celebrants have made and there've been some doozies uh, around uh, um, queer weddings and lastly being seen as a credible business how do you how do you go beyond the I support marriage equality uh, with a rainbow on your website how do you get a bit deeper than that and so the application for the grant mentions that there are going to be variations to that module four and the variations will uh, um, online will effectively one variation will be for small to medium enterprises or SMEs another variation will be for university faculties and departments a third variation will be for public sector departments and agencies and the last fourth variation will be for funeral directors and staff and celebrants and I chose that one out of all the industry sectors because it's a time when there's great pain for the LGBTIQ plus community and the, the politics and so on uh, that, that go down often having done numerous um, queer funerals as a celebrant um, just, I think, mean that it deserves its own special kind of uh, module four. And so for the small to medium enterprises, for the university staff, for the public sector departments and agencies, the focus would be on how to develop an inclusivity policy, an LGBTIQ plus inclusivity policy. And we talk about all the intersections with rural and regional, with people with disabilities, with age, with cold culturally and lingu linguistically diverse or cold communities and so on. Um, intersecting with the LGBTIQ plus community. So how to develop an inclusivity policy? Why would you do that? With whom? What's the gap that's missing? What, what, what are you trying to um, close up in your, um, in your policy? So of course there'd be things like a purpose and a scope and a context. Um, the, some of the key headings, I guess, would be around how do we build in safety and respect for all? Um, how do we attract and recruit people from the LGBTIQ plus community? What are the employee experiences that they already bring to the, um, the organisation that might, uh, might be 
a benefit uh, rather than a hindrance. Um, how does management really come to support LGBTIQ plus members who are, you know, parts of our workplace? And then finally, how do we, how do we, what are the measures of success and accountability? Um, how do we, how are we going to measure that this inclusivity policy has actually generated change and well-being for everyone in the workplace? So thank you for listening. That's um, what I wanted to have the opportunity via this video to do. And uh, I look forward to your consideration of my application. Thank you.